Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in crypto, and I'm bringing out in bite-sized pieces. So today, just like the thumbnail suggests, the everything is moving along in the crypto market, but it's kind of odd because everything else is going down. So we're going to take a look at some uh, great stories, some great news that Cardano smart contracts are coming into play. Also, PayPal is moving into UK and expanding their reach. Kyber is integrating with the Avalanche network. And then we're going to wrap it all up with a little story about Nigerian currency, the US dollar and Bitcoin and how I know for a fact that we are extremely early. So let's uh, we'll take a look at all those things. But first, take a look at what's going on in the market. So uh, today, as you can tell, we're in a different part of the part of the house. We're just uh, moving around. But uh, what we have as far as the market itself is uh, it's down a little bit. We're down almost three percent for a 24 hour period, but uh, 2.12, not too bad. And then Bitcoin price is around 47.5, somewhere around there. And then for the coins themselves, I mean, everything is just down across the board. There's no real winners today. 24-hour change, everything's down except for Dogecoin, 0.59%. Watch out. Amazing. Even Cosmos, 1.65. And then EOS, for some reason, is up 7%. So good for all you EOS holders. That is myself included. I still have that stuff. I don't know why. But uh, that is what's going on in the market. And what's surprising to me is just what's going on and then how everything looks and then how all the different stories that are coming out are just fantastic so we'll start off with this one we're going to talk about cardano and their smart contracts and just how they've actually been able to really get a foothold in a very short amount of time so the first thing we'll talk about look about is this and i always thought this was funny it's uh it's a nice little meme and says these smart contracts are cardano are they in the room right now and uh, I always laugh when I see that, even though I was holding Cardano, because that was a pretty funny uh, joke. And then, of course, this is from Charles Hoskinson. He's like, yeah, yeah, they're here right now. So uh, as far as like Cardano holders out there, me, you, and uh, all the different people out there, we've had to uh, go through a lot of different um, <laughs> negativity, we should say, as far as Cardano getting things ready. But uh, here we are. And in a very short amount of time, uh, we've got uh, 100 smart contracts have already been uh, implemented in a very quick and easy fashion in the last 24 hours. So what's going on here? And this is a direct quote from Charles Hoskinson. Uh, and he states, uh, the focus is now on improving the platform further and ensuring that Cardano was adopted by corporations and governments. And uh, they're working hard for Africa. And that's why I'm working closely with World Mobile Token and how they're going to get uh, telecommunications, hopefully, uh, in a, in a different areas of Africa. They've already got them in Tanzania and different areas. So uh, that's what I like about that project. But he states this, uh, in less than 24 hours, over 100 smart contracts have already been run. Uh, so I don't know the, how it worked out with Ethereum back in 2015, 16, 17, when they got their smart contracts rolling. Was it this fast or not? But it really doesn't matter because Ethereum is so far ahead in getting smart contracts done. But this was the whole thing with Cardano to actually get things uh, done in a little bit uh, different fashion. And uh, we'll see how the developers work it out. But then this was uh, also more great news is that uh, the likes of PolyMarketQ and Polygon co-founder Sandeep Nawel lost the bet and now Hoskin wants them to put their money. And what this was, I thought this was funny as well, is that uh, people were saying, you, Cardano is a, is a scam. It will never run anything, and uh, we're going to bet X amount of dollars it'll never happen. And to me, you have to put your money where your mouth is. I have actually have a bet right now that uh, Voyager will hit $30 by the end of the year. Now, it's one of those predictions that's uh, a little bit far off, but it's one I'm going to stick to. And with this one, if you say it's going to happen, it doesn't happen, you got to pay up. And that's really what it comes down to. So uh, as far as like good news, I mean, uh, for Cardano holders, it couldn't get... Uh, much better right now. And uh, even though it's doing so well, of course, what do we have with the uh, price action? Cardano down 3.5% to $2.36. So again, pretty sure we're early. Let me know what you think about that in the comments section. Let's move on to our next piece. We're talking about how PayPal is going to allow the UK <laughs> to buy and sell Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, and Bitcoin Cash. For some reason, not a big Litecoin fan, but uh, maybe you in the comment section can persuade me otherwise. So San Jose based uh, tech giant PayPal announced that all its eligible customers can now buy, sell and hold crypto in the UK. We've already had this in the United States. They were supposed to roll it out globally. I think this is just part of their plan. But the big thing to me 
uh, was that it's not just about being able to buy crypto, but it's actually being able to use crypto. And they were supposed to roll this out globally to all their merchants, which was an additional 300 million different individuals and companies that we could actually use crypto, which would be Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, Ethereum. I don't think they've done that yet. Also, they were supposed to uh, allow us to custody our own crypto as far as like being able to transfer our crypto out of the wallet into our third party wallets. This was written on May 27th, uh, 2021. And uh, that still hasn't happened yet. So we'll see if it actually does. And that's the big thing with PayPal. It's a great thing they're doing, bring about mass adoption. But if you really want it to, to really get into actually the whole power of what crypto and digital assets do, you have to let people custody their own cryptocurrency because right now they're not holding crypto. They're just holding IOUs, and that's uh, not what this was designed for. So again, another uh, great story that uh, hasn't really moved the market too much, and we can see again, Bitcoin down negative 1%, Ethereum down 5%, Bitcoin Cash negative 1.8, and uh, Litecoin probably down, ah, negative 4.82. So again, more great news, and nothing really happens. And to, to really get to the point of that, uh, as far as like great news and what's going on, you have to remember that it's not just because there's great news, things are going to go up all the time. It's because sometimes there's just more sellers than there are buyers. And that's really what it comes down to. Sometimes it's just whales moving things around. Sometimes it's just some people just go, you know what, this isn't the time for me or institutions kind of break apart. So when we take a look at all these stories, they are good indicators of where things are going, but they're not going to happen today, next week or next month. But uh, I can tell you things will happen. So on top of those great stories, here's another good one. Kyber Network uh, launches, uh, launches with Avalanche 5.8 liquidity mining program. So what it states here, I thought was pretty interesting, was that Kyber aims to enable dynamic fees and higher capital efficiency for DeFi users on Avalanche. It's putting up 5.8 million in liquidity mining, a common tool for DeFi projects. Uh, Kyber's already launched on Dynamic Market Makers, uh, Ethereum, Polygon, and Binance Smart Chain. Smart Chain. And then uh, the um, Kyber co-founder, uh, CEO Loy Lu, says this, At the end of the day, whichever ecosystem has the growing community, we're going to be there. So really... What it states, and it makes a lot of sense, is that, look, if you got a lot of uh, community members, we're going to be there and we're going to add liquidity and we're going to allow them to gain yield uh, for uh, uh, DeFi uh, farming. So it, it makes a lot of sense that they would go to these ones. I wonder why they haven't gone to all of them. But, hey, there's only so much liquidity to go around. And then also Thursday saw the announcement of a $230 million investment led by Polychain and Three Arrows Capital to provide liquidity on Avalanche-based DeFi platforms. Again, uh, more fantastic news. And again, Avalanche down 4%. But 35% for uh, seven days, so not too bad. And then on top of that, like when I take a look at, at Kyber Network, the thing I always think about is, well, first of all, what is Kyber Network and why do we need it? And what does it really do? So this was from Gemini.com and it just states two types of trades. One is, and this is all for Kyber Network. Uh, you send your ETH to the Kyber Network smart contract. Uh, the contract then queries all of its reserves for the best ETH to basic attention token exchange rate. Contract then sends ETH to reserve with the with uh, the best ETH to bat. Finally, that reserve sends you basic attention token. So basically, just like Uniswap, right? It's going to go through that. It's going to do its own thing, and then it's and based on Ethereum. So when I was reading, that, I'm like, oh, so everything's based on Ethereum. But what if you don't use uh, or aren't the, the the trading pairs aren't Ethereum based? Well. It states, let's imagine that you want to trade BAT for DAI. Since you're not trading directly in ETH, some additional steps are required. You send your BAT to Kyber. Contract query, queries the best BAT to ETH. Contract sends BAT to uh, with the best uh, BAT to ETH exchange rate. The reserve then sends ETH to the contract. The contract then queries all its reserves. The contract then sends ETH the reserve with the best ETH to DAI exchange. Finally, that reserve then sends you to your DAI. So it sends you DAI. So that, when I'm reading this, I'm like, do we really need to go through all these steps just to exchange two tokens it just seems to me kind of ridiculous and just makes me realize that man we are super early to all these areas uh because for the dexes that are going to come out on top of these platforms that are based in smart contracts i don't really think we really need this type of thing i mean 
there's always uh, something that, that could actually improve it. But down the line, do we really want to jump through all these hoops and just stay on Ethereum just to get the, the uh, because everything's based on Ethereum? Or can we just kind of branch off and do our own thing? That will be the big thing. So in my personal opinion, I just don't understand Kyber Network and what it's all there for. Maybe I'm wrong. Correct me in the, uh, in the comments. But uh, on top of that, if we take a look also at not only Kyber Network, let's take a look at the price. And all this great news, down 3%. So again, great news doesn't really equal too much these days because we're just early. And then lastly, we're going to finish up with Nigerian currency. And I'm not going to read this whole article. But I found it interesting that the Nigerian currency plunges a new level of 570, which is 10% of the value lost in under 30 days. And what's going on here is just like most currencies around the world. Or not most, but some currencies around the world. They're just dipping and their, uh, their purchasing power is dropping. And then the big thing that I took from this was this. There was an investigation by the Daily Trust found and some people and corporate entities in Nigeria are now saving their fortunes in, fortunes in dollars, which doesn't make much sense to me. I mean, I understand because, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about stores of value. So the dollar, I mean, is OK. But if you're talking about the store of value, but take a look at the actual purchasing power as the actual uh, increase in circulation goes up, the purchasing power goes way down and you can take a look and this is back in the 1970s but i've got another graph that shows all the way back in the 1920s and 30s or 1930s the purchasing power has uh decreased by like two five percent of what it actually was because of the fact that the circulation is going up and in, it states uh i wrote this in to remind me as of february 10th 2021 there was 2.05 trillion worth of federal reserve notes in circulation that was february 10th i can guarantee it's more than that right now so we take a look at the dollar these people in nigeria are putting everything in the dollar why why is that it's because of what they're used to and the only thing they really know because when we take a look moving forward everything that that is that is new as far as innovation it's not going to make sense to people and first of all they're going to fight it here's a here's a an illustration from the 1900s where they were talking about how electricity was going to be the downfall of civilization and it was actually going to be more harm than what it was worth. Now, who actually put this propaganda out? You can guess yourself. There's a lot of people who don't like innovation and they will stop, but nothing to stop that to keep the status quo. So on top of that, let's move forward to the actual internet. And uh, the internet itself, I was around when that was actually uh, created. And I thought that was the greatest thing ever, but then you'd see articles like this. The internet may be just a passing fad as millions give up on it. And that was the thing when we when we got it, we thought it wasn't gonna last that long. We just thought, well, it's a, it's a great uh, information index, but that was about it. And now here we are. And then even take a look at this, even so-called experts will come out and say, that'll never work. So this was a story about Jeff Bezos going to Harvard Business School and what they told him. This is in 1997, uh, Jeff Bezos put a boss and to give a presentation at uh, HBS. He spoke to a class taking a course called Managing the Market Space. And afterward, the graduate students pretended it wasn't there while they dissected the online prospect. And this is what they told him. They said, hey, man, you seem like a really nice guy. So don't take this the wrong way. But you really need to sell Amazon to Barnes & Noble and get out now. And that's what they told Jeff Bezos. And he's like, well, I think I got a different opinion about that. And if we take a look at that and just extrapolate that out, how do you think Amazon did? Pretty good. But I really want you to take a look at the stock price right now of Amazon. If you just zoom in to what it is, like we sometimes do, we zoom in at the price, like I just did uh, multiple times, we can see that actually the stock market price for Amazon today is down. Oh, it's awful. Let's take a look at five days. Let's take a look at six months. Let's take a look at year to date. Still doing pretty good. How about a year? Not too bad. How about five years? Way better. Let's take a look at the max. This right here, if we go back into 1998, the stock price, 747, and then there was this thing called the dot-com bubble. This was in 99, $64, and everybody was like, I'm a genius because I invested in Amazon at 93 bucks, 100 bucks. And then when the dot-com bubble burst, just like we see these cycles as far as crypto and digital assets, look at the price now. $16, $14, went from 100 bucks to 14 bucks. If you would have held on to Amazon, you know what you've been called? Uh, you're in a bubble. Uh, that'll never work out. Uh, that'll never happen. It'll, it'll never take shape. 
And look what happened to Amazon. And it's the same thing with cryptocurrencies and digital assets. So look, a uh, lot of things to go over today, and uh, but that is it. So if you like the video, first of all, uh, give it a thumbs up, give it a like. If you stay with me all the way, in, all the, way to the end, I appreciate it. Uh, thanks so much. But uh, that is it for today. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.